The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the run of I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 Nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan, and welcome to Living Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. And that's to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms. And good morning, I'm Paige Clark. That's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg, 70 degrees, going up to 88. So we're uh, getting into that May kind of higher Perfect. 80s. I like but, it. But uh, next week it's actually going to be in the mid 80s and lower 80s. So, uh, so we're having nice weather bit. if you want to come down yeah, to visit us in Florida. It is beautiful and it's still not too hot. Yeah, subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is a wonderful newsletter with clickable links to the stuff Nico and I read all week and we want to share with you. It's good stuff in there. Yeah, it has a nice look there. Yeah, you go to services and mm -hmm. you hit that. Uh, and when you do, this comes up. And, of course, you hit either the Primal Edge or the Health Signals Primal Edge right there. You can order it, $89 for a subscription. You get it every single month. That's good stuff. And, and you can pick up the Primal Edge, as we said, and you can use your Tiger do Dollars if you're part of the Tiger's Den. Yeah, and you can use that both on the newsletters. And, uh, of course, the newsletters are $10 a month. comes on the 1st and the 15th, so we'll have a brand new one out tomorrow. I'm going to go home and finish that up today. And if so. you're epidemic and you want to be part of our conversation today, give us a call. You can reach us at 877-927-6648. Wonderful. So I'd like to start off today, well, we're going to talk about keto for the most of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's this article here in uh, in Com says scientists discover why it's so hard to stop eating when our bodies say we're full. Right. Kind of an interesting thing. We know we do overeat, and I know uh, myself, I distinctly remember grabbing the big quart of ice cream and sitting in front of the TV, downing the whole darn thing, saying, well, I'm just going to have a couple of scoops. You know? Well, not even that, too. It's, it's in addition to that, Nico. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that are grazers. I noticed uh, certain people in my family, as they walk to the bathroom, they come back and they pass the fridge, they open it up. Hmm. You know, it's just this almost like a uh, robotic feeling of, oh, I, you may not really be hungry, but there might be something in there worth eating. Well, there's also lots of cues that we get if we're watching TV about eating. Oh, I believe the it's, commercials, it's, I believe they're probably embedded. Maybe, maybe so. Mm -hmm. So this one, for some people, overeating is a personal challenge, but scientists are on a mission to understand why we continue to eat after we've had our fill. Mm -hmm. A few chips. A yeah, a few are delicious, but a whole bag is kind of disaster waiting to happen. If you, you know, many times you can be watching a television show mm -hmm. or doing something else. The next thing you know, you've eaten the whole bag of chips or the whole basket of bread at the restaurant yeah. before your meals have ever come. Yeah, and a study released uh, on Wednesday in the journal Neuron, scientists uh, argue that our need to overeat doesn't stem from uh, inherent gluttony. Instead, it's probably linked to a newly identified network of mammalian brain circuitry that drives us to consume tasty calories. Okay. I'm always suspicious when they really put in these complicated phrases about, you know, neurons and things like that. And it may be true, but what my feeling is is that we started down a path a few hundred years ago, maybe a couple of thousand years ago, that changed the natural way we eat. And, uh, and I was thinking of this earlier while I was reading this because we have pets and a lot of our pets are over eaters too. You see that, yeah. You yeah, see a lot and of what are they overweight. eating? Well, they're eating a processed food. They're exactly yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and that's what happened to us. We started to process our food. Process our food and our brains came to like it. Yes. Uh, regardless of the fact that it's not really that good for us. Well, the other thing is too that mostly if it's a, if it's a processed food it has high in carbohydrates and not so much. I mean it's hard to overeat a ribeye. I yeah. mean, you can, especially yeah. if you've eaten wrong for a long time. But if you're keto-adapted, 
You're not going to eat that ribeye, but maybe four to six ounces. Well, and that's kind of what you were explaining before the show started. As you become uh, a dual fat burner, at the very least, I like right. to say I think I'm a pretty good dual fat burner, your, your body learns to get its fuel on less and less. And, and the size of your steaks and, and, and that's chickens exactly and your fish just That's exactly what's been happening. just decreases. Yeah, so Ellen and I are in this about 11, 12 years, and uh, it started out real easy. We didn't have many problems, but slowly but surely, the decrease in the amount that we ate was kind of a natural thing. And now we're down to, and I was mentioning just before the show, we're, you know, last night we ate and we had about four ounces of meat. Mm-hmm and the night before about four ounces of meat we don't really go over that too much anymore where i remember last year we were at about six and the year before maybe about seven or eight right so slowly but surely i think you now kind you of can go to a restaurant and get an eight ounce fillet and split it and you're both happy and you save money exactly and um it, it's true nico and this food the signaling that we're getting even from the best of restaurants is to eat more uh you never see have a four ounce steak <laughs> on a restaurant menu, right? That's true. That's yeah, true. There's no money in it, you right. know, but they've got that 14-ounce cowboy ribeye or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, so if you go out and you have something like that, I guess the thing to do is to share it and to know that you're going to have lef leftover for steak and eggs the yeah. next day. So they're saying in this article uh, that uh, there are multiple processes, multiple signaling pathways, and multiple brain regions that control the act of eating. Mm -hmm. That's certainly true. What Hardaway, who's one of the scientists, is more interested in understanding what's so special about tasty foods. Yeah, he knows that we, as ma mammals, right. we're motivated to get what's yummy. We're, mm -hmm. we, we're, that, we're trained that way, but we didn't know exactly how the brain reacts and drives us towards tasty food. But we do have some clues. Previously, experiments had shown that hedonic eating, eating mm, for pleasure, yeah. there's yeah, that word. Yeah, that's where you're scooping that ice cream. Rather than yeah. necessity involves the engagement of nociceptin, a small protein that works as a signaling molecule in the mammalian nervous system. So they're playing with those chemical reactions in the brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's still, for me, yeah. it comes down to the carbs. It, you know, in the woods, mm -hmm. in the wild, where are you going to find the stuff that triggers that? Right. You're not going to because you're hunting for an animal, and if you're eating some grass or some leaves or some berries, there's not going to be much around unless it's fall. And, you know, when you say that about the berries, um, especially when I was healing, my daughter has been with us, and she's been really, or she was great about making me breakfast. Mm -hmm. She knew because I was sitting around, I was sort of a little de depressed about it. I didn't want to eat, yeah. but I needed to eat. And she would make my eggs, and then there'd be like four berries. Oh, great. Four berries. That's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and she got it because, you know, she did Mark Sisson's primal yeah. training. That's the way it would be. You wouldn't be eating a basket full of berries, mm -mm. you know. Uh, you would have a few because mm -hmm. they, they were by when uh, you were unless, walking to Unless uh, you were a primitive person and you found a bush of berries. And then you might go yeah, gorge on them. Yeah, you'd go gorge on them, and you know winter's coming, so you're going to get a little more fat on you. So that's kind of the way it works. Exactly. So the I wanted to establish that fact that in the wild, you're not going to find the foods that cause these problems. Mm -hmm. So. That's our natural way right there, and that's the same thing for the animals, right? For the dogs or the, the wolves out there, they're not going to find this stuff. I think it comes back to how we started the show, Nico. Uh, the primal edge is getting back to what's most important, the things that are natural, things that are wild. Yeah, and speaking of primal edge, uh, it's time to get your primal edge, folks. We'll be back in just two minutes. Very back. Five minutes, maybe. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. why scientists say it's so hard to stop eating uh, even when our bodies are full. We were talking about the science of hedonistic eating and the team that was studying it really found out that it was this uh, nociceptin compound that caused the amygdala of the brain to light up when, say for example, the mice got some tasty morsels instead of their run-of-the-mill chow. So sub subsequently, the, these, these teams found out that it was actually um, the amygdala that really controlled whether or not, you know, we, how our brains reacted to this tasty food. I lost my spot. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. It's, uh, we react a lot different to this stuff because it was so unusual. So that when we found it, and I, I always think of honey at this point, mm -hmm. where, which our ancient ancestors knew. They knew about the smoke, right. and they knew how to get this stuff, and it was so important for them. Remember that this is a natural structure. It's very, very sweet compared to everything else that's out there. Oh, absolutely. So naturally, we're drawn to it. So this was nature's way of introducing us to something that was very good for us at certain times of the year. It's a very healing product. It helps our gut uh, heal. It uh, helps us change from season to season. And now we have these hundreds of different foods that are manufactured by us human beings that have that same type of taste. And are designed to cause that same kind of reaction exactly. in the amygdala. So we got our amygdalas lighting up and they're telling us, hey, tasty foods around, eat it all up. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like going to the movies. Remember we used to have a cartoon before every movie? Oh, and we yeah. used to love that. That's why we went as kids. Mm -hmm. The movie wasn't as interesting as that. So now we're getting 10 cartoons, 100 cartoons. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah, the amygdala is a very evolutionary, conserved part of the brain structure. And it is why scientists suspect a study like this on mice could hold true for humans. And it's been studied for its contributions to fear learning as well. 
Yeah, an accepting and governing school of thought is that hedonic eating exists because it's a byproduct of time when large, calorie-rich meals were scarce, hence the circuitry that drives it in our brains. The scientists hypothesized that we evolved to overconsume when we came across these calories. These are the fruits, these are the nuts, mm -hmm. these are the, uh, the honey. But I think what we can take from this is that industry and, and the businesses of food the business they of food. Into this. They tapped into this, guys. They, you can't blame they, them. They, I mean, they've been rewiring our brains, and, and then we're getting as big as uh, barn doors. Yeah, and it's uh, also doing a lot of other things to our brain besides that, too. Mm -hmm. I believe. That's yeah. exactly right. So, neurons in the central nucleus of the amygdala in mice can provide us with a new therapeutic entry point into targeting the circuitry in people. Mm -hmm. So, this is our behavioral therapy that they're talking about. Uh, it could be a useful biomarker. What it is telling us is that we're eating the wrong things. We're eating something that's supposed to be scarce, and we're eating it every day. That's right. So, kind of in summary, food palatability is one of the main factors that drives food consumption. Yeah. Yeah. And now there's even a more dangerous thing coming in. We're talking about, you know, here's a guy eating a burger, and it may be a burger, but it may be that new burger that's made out of soy. Exactly. Which is going to trigger it a even burger more. Like food. <laughs> yeah, and, and a burger on, on a bun itself is not really good because the burger is probably not a good quality. Then mm -hmm. you have the bun, which is not good quality uh, of any kind. Uh, and whatever else you throw on it. But now if you had soy to that, uh, I think you're doubling your chances of uh, getting into problems. Yes, because that's not really not a food. Soy yeah, is not now, a toy for the girl yeah, or the boy. Exactly. Not and the now, way it's processed in this country. That's right. And now they're finding really ways of making it taste like meat, which is even more dangerous. Now mm -hmm. we think it's meat or we don't care anymore, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So anyway, I wanted to move into the next article. Which is Ken Fats be turned into glycogen from muscle? That's an interesting question because now that many more people are learning that we are actually adapted to eating fats and using them for energy, yeah. what do we know? Well, you know, the amount that. of fat in the average diet and the amount of stored fat in the average American body makes the notion of converting that fat into usable energy appealing. I think that's really what excess body fat is stored energy yeah and there are three questions or four questions here that they ask what are the ways fat are useful for living things or mm -hmm. you're used in living things the conversion of carbohydrates to triglycerides the fat mm -hmm. and can our body produce carbohydrates from pro protein intake interesting and what are the metabolic pathways to metal uh, me metabolize metabolize fats. fats right yeah right right so the amount of fat that you put in your body, and it's always the types of fat, and a lot of times when I read these articles on food and they say, well, don't eat junk, go, let's go back to eating whole grains and fruits and vegetables and things like that, they're always putting that stuff in our brain. But I think the premier fats for human beings, because we're mammals, is mammalian fat. Mm -hmm. And I think of tallow and uh, the pork version of it and the bird version of them. They're all good, eating the skin of, the, of chicken, things like that. And this is what gives us a real satisfaction. It also gives us the necessary um, energy mm -hmm. to go forth and to kind of reorganize our body where the fat is being burned that we're storing so we get our toxins out and new fat that's introduced to us is also being burned and maybe some of it's stored. Maybe some of it's even being turned into other things. So let's go on. Yeah, let me just give a little background before you get into the relationship between okay. fats and glycogen. But the amount of fat in the average uh, diet and the amount of stored fat in the average body makes the notion of converting that fat into usable energy appealing. Glycogen, a form of energy stored in muscles for quick use, is what the body draws on first to perform movements. And higher glycogen levels result in higher usable energy. It is not possible for fats to be converted directly into glycogen because they are not made of glucose. But it is possible, folks, for fats to be indirectly broken down into glucose, which can be used to create glycogen. That's right. So mm -hmm. fats are a nutrient found in food and a compound used for long-term energy storage in the body, while glycogen is a chain of glucose molecules created by the body from glucose for short-term energy storage and utilization. Those are the real keys. We mm -hmm. want to be on fat for the long term, and when we get into trouble and we, want, we need that extra boost to fight, to get away, to do something uh, like climb a tree, or to do our jogging or running, we have the extra storage right there, and it's easy to tap into it. And remember, what I've always told everyone is uh, if you want to be well, you got to heal the cell. 
Mm -hmm. And fats are primarily used to maintain cell membrane integrity. Mm -hmm. Cell membrane is where it's all happening. That's right. And the cell membrane is where we're getting good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. That's right. And that's, that's why, why we like something works. like the primal edge. But And then we can get into the whole concept of we've got the bilipid layer of the cell membrane. And so we need the high vibrational, I might call that the omega-3, and then we need the more, you know, the, the, the omega type of fats. And, um, gamma linole linolic acid, mm -hmm. and then also we need the saturated fats that help us build more stable outer shell. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, a good thing to think about is uh, our uh, thing, problem that we have with fish these days, especially salmon. Because uh, if you're getting salmon in Florida and salmon in different parts of the world, or in this country at least, you're probably getting farmed salmon. And you can tell farmed salmon when you cut it open. Uh, a lot of times you get it smoked in different ways, but they'll have this white ooze that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, natural fish, uh, the natural salmon, will have this pink stuff coming out of it, which mm -hmm. is the oil, right. which is our omega-3. Yeah. The other stuff is so soybean oil. And and what is no soybean? It's a yeah. PUFA. Yeah. And PUFAs are bad. Um, to, and, and it, hey, we need a little bit. Yep. We need a little bit of those, but we'll get back into talking a little bit more. Stick around, folks. we got a lot more. A lot of stuff going on fat today. Yep. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of performance training since 1998 Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically as a certified personal trainer Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions the performance training studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
everyone. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're talking about can fats be turned into glycogen for muscles. So we're really talking about the three ma macronutrients, which is fat, uh, protein, and carbohydrates. And we know that carbohydrates can be converted into stored fat under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. So it seems logical that glucose could be derived from fat. And this process is called uh, gluconeogenesis. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And there are multiple different ways of how the body does this. It's a good thing to have because if we're on a low fat type of diet and they mention you know here if you're starving you're going to be in this state well it's if you're in a low fat diet i think this is our natural state so yes yeah, so glucogenesis don't really have, is generally only occurs when the body cannot produce sufficient glucose from carbohydrates but if by choice you're limiting carbohydrates your body's going to yeah. become I mean, more efficient yeah. at this and in the process. wild there aren't there folks there's no, you know and that's just where we're going i love up. that when you say that that really drives the point home it, it does for are, me it keeps <clears> me centered if you were, you know, in Canada mm -hmm. in the winter, what what you going to eat? Animal. Yeah. Yeah. A big one, hopefully. Keep yeah, it going you're not going to make. Year. You're not going to make. You know, it's like you go on social media and everyone's showing a picture of their food. It's <laughs> all beautiful, colorful food, and I mean, it appeals to me and it makes my heart pitter patter. But it's not realistic. That's right. Yeah. So uh, once glucose is obtained from fats, which we know it now it can do, your body easily converts it into glycogen. And what we're talking about here, if you have uh, used your glycogen storage, which is you know stored right next to your muscles, really easy access for you. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. You're replacing it. We're not uh, over consuming here. We're just replacing the stored w things that we used. So uh, there's uh, in glyco. Uh, uh, glycogen synthesis, long chains of individual glucose molecules bond together, eventually forming a glycogen polymer that can be stored in the liver or in a skeleton muscle. Your body then utilize, utilizes this as a quick energy source for muscle performing or, or anaerobic activity. Uh, okay, so the so. bottom line really is your body cannot convert fats directly into muscle-ready glycogen. Yeah. However, through a series of metabolic processes that result from conditions of depleted carbohydrates, in that case, the body knows how to be resilient. It is possible for the stored fats to be broken down into glucose, and then they can be converted to glycogen. But yeah. carbohydrates are immediate and easily converted into glucose, so metabolizing them is the most efficient way for your body to produce, I'll, per the article. You know, it's funny how they always, well, this is very hard for your body to do, but with the uh, carbohydrates, very easy to do. Folks, these are body processes. They're all hard to do. They all go through different things. Right. And they're just trying to make it sound like this is something that's not natural. That's the way it seems to me. Yeah, exactly. They have to put that in there. But remember, I am always suspect that who makes money from carbohydrates? Since they're not found in abundance in nature, other than through fruits and vegetables, which aren't in all parts of the world. I mean, if the creator uh, wanted us to subsist on those completely, he wouldn't have, you know, half of the continent of the United States covered in snow with no fruits and vegetables for those really pretty salads or, or fruit smoothies that everyone's showing, right? Right. I mean... Well, we, we as human beings, uh, when we saw stuff we wanted, we took it back home. That's what we did. Uh -huh. And you can't blame the ignorant uh, people from Europe that came over here and took all the things from the corn and the potatoes and the tomatoes and all these vine things, uh, cucumbers and things like that, that we never had in the, in the old world. And we consumed them like crazy, and then different times they saved our lives. Right. And because they saved our lives, they become even more important. And this is the path that I see. Well, it becomes the holy bread. But this is a perfect way to segue maybe into this article uh, about thinking of trying keto first. Read what three registered dietitians have to say. Because again, what we're going to see here is a bias towards creating fear, uncertainty, and doubt about a fat-adapted ad diet. And I think the primary motivation is that if people eliminate a lot of the processed carbohydrates that are part of the other standard American diet, then the food industry is going to suffer. And I think the medical industry is going to suffer from uh, customers. And, and that's the, really what the bottom line is. Yeah, and just imagine the pressure that these food companies and these drug companies are putting on people who are registered dietitians. And registered dietitians have to follow the protocol that the FDA puts forth from the companies that are producing our food. Exactly. And you can just follow the money trail there and... and uh, 
truly there are a lot of registered dietitians that go on to actually learn the good stuff after they get out of school, I believe. However, I do want to say that, uh, and, and I'm going to preface this with, I am not a purely ketogenic person. I cycle in and out. Mm -hmm. I find that I enjoy certain carbs. I'm, I'm seasonal. And I'm trying to be very conscious of what would the primal person, what would primal page do if she was living? Primal page, I yeah, like hundred thousand years ago. Right. So you know, just just. So proud to be naked. I think it's important to see what. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and I do that every day in the sun mm -hmm. when I'm home. Now that's part of my primal nature. But I think it's kind of you got to look at this with who stands to benefit. And as we start to hit some of these points, so let's talk we're seeing about that some of the very well-known people in the diet industry, it's as if they're being paid to really shoot down keto. Well, who's, that, who's that one gal, that Julian oh, uh, Michaels? Yeah, Julian Michaels. That yeah. Greatest Loser, she yeah. came out to say, this is damaging. Well, I hate to say it, Julian, but every single one of those people that were on your show <laughs> Gained back all their weight and then Pretty some, much. didn't they? Yeah. That's a shame. Well, here's another. Here's uh, Andrea Wilson, who's an RD, LD, a dietitian at the Northwest Medicine Metabolic Health and Surgical Weight Loss Center in uh, Del and Del Delnor Hospital. So that says it right there, Weight Loss Center. Mm -hmm. So they want people on carbs. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, I feel pretty strongly that keto is not a good <coughs> idea, she says. People miss carbs. She says simply, and her experience is not even the craving for cake or bread to do it. More like fruit or dairy. No doubt about that. Isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, missing the normalcy of having every food group in the diet makes it hard to keep up. So this is her brain but saying... But that's okay. It, well, it's tying into that article that they miss carbs because yeah. we found out why. Of course. Because there the is a all the way uh, that noroceptin that stimulates the amygdala and industry and the food giants have figured out how to make us crave them. Yeah, here's another thing she says when keto with keto in particular sus, uh, sustainability is a big issue because of what happens if you go off the diet. She says she no, sees a lot of patients who have that. tried the keto diet and many have had success but nearly all those people have also gained all that weight back. Well you think 10,000 years ago you have a choice of going back? Right. <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Why would you go back? Here, I found something healthy, I feel really good, and now I'm going to change my mind and go back to eating crap. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So this is the reason she doesn't like it. Uh -huh. But nearly all of those people have gained everything back, she says. Uh, staying in ketosis will help you avoid weight gain, but it comes with other challenges. Keto is an all-or-nothing diet. Yeah, you're right. It's a very hard diet to make a lifestyle. I say you're wrong. It's actually very easy. You just have to stick with it. And as the years go by, it gets easier and easier. That, this is one of the things I found out. It's not adaptable that first six months or the year. You get kind of adapted to it. But now, all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, my wife are eating completely different than we did the last eight years before that. I think you can tell when you've adapted. Is, is you're in control of your hunger. Your hunger doesn't control you. Yeah. That's one of the things I like about this. And I'm prefacing this with saying, I am not, uh, right now, I'm not keto. See, I'm following more of a little seasonal thing right now. Mm -hmm. We're coming into spring, and there are green things. Yeah. And I'm having some of those green things. And, and these things are the, this is the transition period right here, April and May. And this is when you probably need those things. Yeah. Because that's when they're well, here. Well, and I spend a lot of time in the sun. The more Jack has taught me, the more time you're in the sun, the more carbs you can have. We'll be right back, folks. Be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back. We've been talking about the keto diet and the advantages and disadvantages and what people are saying about it. And we're uh, doing this from an article. Uh, where is this from? Thinking of uh, trying keto. Popsugar.com. Uh -huh. uh, and medical reasons to avoid keto, weight loss aside, uh, these researchers said there were some medical conditions that might preclude people from trying out the keto diet. And some people would argue that, but they're, they're concerned about uh, pregnant women or people who struggled with eating disorders. However, well, they wouldn't recommend it for type 1 or type 2 diabetes in pregnant women. That's type 1, uh, for sure. Type but I, th two, I, think, I, I, I think everyone would argue. I mean, yeah, I would say. But again, that's because they've got so much invested. Yeah. How, it, how can they go back and say, when they've been telling diabetics, you need to eat 150 grams of carbs, that's what they're saying. Well, I've also Minimum. read a lot of uh, stuff on the web, uh, uh, personal uh, statements from people who were type 1 diabetics that have converted to a keto diet successfully with their doctor's help and uh, oh, are, absolutely. are keto adapted. Absolutely. So, then, so this is what their standard... Um, Talking points are. Mm -hmm. Registered dietitians are told because there have been people that have had blood sugar issues as a result of this. Again, it's a how you do it and the guidance you have and the medical support. Yep. And that any of this, if, if this really resonates with someone, it could be a very good move for yeah, people. Yeah, and they said it might be to not, not be a good idea if you have heart problems or if you've had your gallbladder removed since it helps to digest fats. They seem, to only, they seem to only recommend it for epileptic epilepsy yes. which we know it's got a lot of proven but yeah but getting back to what you were I saying I don't know about the gallbladder uh, but I know the liver does produce uh, the enzymes that we need mm -hmm. that the gallbladder produces for us so I don't know about that uh, well I think let me just preface that and you go with someone who works with digestive issues mm -hmm. Uh, if the gallbladder is sluggish and having a hard time, which most of us, by the time we're 40, no doubt about it, we're, we have sluggish gallbladder. Yep. You, you and I both did the coffee enema series mm -hmm. to kind of clean out the biliary chain. It could be a real issue. And you and I were talking during the break that a lot of women struggle. They don't adapt to keto quite as well as men do. I've, and that, I've, I've, I think a lot of it has to do with that gallbladder liver uh, chain and the way we process things. So, and so I think some th things might also have to do with menopause because a lot of women that I'm training are right in that cusp area. That's us. So, and the thyroid energy. Um, yeah. You know, we learned, you and I have studied Ray Pete. I love Ray Pete mm -hmm. stuff. And... Um, and Ray Pete has found that, you know, many times 
with people eating a lot of fats, but they're getting a lot of poof of fat. Yeah. And this this really is uh, stagnating to our liver gallbladder chain. Yeah. yeah, I think coconut oil is pretty good, but I think the animal fats are the primary fats we should be using. Uh, the only PUFAs I would say uh, would be the omega-3s, but the other PUFAs, the unnatural PUFAs that mm -hmm. are out there in the so-called vegetable oils and uh, what they put in uh, processed food. And that's the problem when you eat out in restaurants. You, you don't really that. have control. Uh, right. As you mentioned, much of the uh, oils that are being used in the cooking kitchens is soybean based and that's definitely a poofa and it's not a good oil. Or peanut but, oil. Mm -hmm. yeah, something like so, that. so we just talked about the, the concerns that registered dietitians have. Not to say that other people in, in the medical world, Dr. Finney, uh, many of these people are actually going for all of these types of conditions and using the keto diet very successfully. But what about weight loss? You know, um, you know, many of the registered dietitians are admitting that keto does produce attractive weight loss. Well, here it says uh, it does produce fast weight loss, though at the beginning much of it comes from losing fluids. Well, I'm sorry. F fluids make you look fat. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Ask any woman. She'll tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they, doctors may recommend uh, going to ketosis before a weight loss surgery because, well... That seems kind of dumb to me. Mm. If you're yeah, considering keto, it says uh, get a doctor's or dietitian's opinion on a step first. Well, I would say seek out people who already think this is a good idea and, and people use who are their experts advice. In the keto diet. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. go to a person who doesn't know about keto because they're going to give you an opinion saying, "Well, that's not really going to be healthy. You're not. Uh, you don't have any uh, problems like a child with epilepsy. Exactly. So why would you do this? Right. So yeah. that's not good. So the other thing I wanted to go over was the keto flu which mm -hmm. uh, really does happen to people. And, and this is really great because a lot of people don't understand that sometimes you feel worse before you get better. And this is written by Ke uh, Kelly Herring. She's uh, awesome and she's very, she is one of those knowledgeable people. She writes often for Grassland uh, Beef, but she has her own site, I think, the yeah. Healthy Gourmet. Uh, the keto diet's everywhere you look, as we know, and it's on the cover of magazines, the checkout uh, you know, aisles. But you know, we want to discuss the fact that the metabolic state of nutritional ketosis and how it works to transform your body from a sugar burner to a fat burner. Right. And we can talk about how we can accelerate your transition into ketosis in a safe way. Yeah. Yeah. Now we we want to cover the side effects. So if you've been following a reasonably low-carb diet for some time, your tr transition to nutri uh, nutritional ketosis should be smooth and painless. Mm -hmm. You likely won't experience any ne negative side effect. While you do notice improved energy, greater mental clarity, and accelerated fast loss. But on the other hand, if you have been eating a high-carb diet filled with traditional bread, pasta, pastries, desserts, you may experience a few bumps in the road as your metabolism shifts from burning the glucose fuel, the kindling, as we, you and I like to say it, mm -hmm. into burning the slow-burning log or burning fat. It has, you, your whole metabolism has to be rewired to, to be able to burn fat. As yeah, your source. biological adjustments are taking place to increase fat breakdown and reduce insulin production. And this is the key. Your mm -hmm. insulin, you need to get that insulin down. You know, insulin is there all the time kind of testing the waters, and it shoots a little bit in as soon as this food comes in. And if it's protein or, and fat, it's going to say, oh, you guys are cool. If it's carbohydrates, it needs to shoot a little bit more mm -hmm. because carbohydrates are considered something that needs to get out of the body. So we either burn it very fast or the excess is always stored. And that's and the problem. A lot of people eat too many carbs and they're not active enough. And then the carbs are, are considered a toxic fuel that needs to be stored. I mean, I'm going to use that word. That's right. The body sees it as, oh, my gosh, we got to break this down. That's right. We can't have this energy, the glucose, right. high blood sugar running around in our blood. And as a runner for many years, I carb loaded, I did the mm -hmm. whole carb thing, and it's kind of, uh, kind of, it's kind of stealthy because you're running and you're doing all this and you're uh, doing 30, 40 miles a week, and no wonder you're thin. Yeah. And you're eating carbs. Yes. Yeah, but I've always said... You look at a marathon runner and you look at a sprinter. That's right. Which body do you want? Yeah. Oh, the give me the every sprinter's time. body, the muscles, right. the, the, the quick twitch muscles. Yeah. So what, let's talk about this keto flu. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable side effects as your body tries to learn how to burn. And here are some of the symptoms of the keto flu. Okay. The mental fog mm -hmm. is a biggie. The other one is that what stops most people from continuing is the low energy and the fatigue. Yeah, you feel sort of fluey. Yeah. Shaky, dizziness, weakness. 
and muscle cramps are another one, and then the last thing is the nausea, the headaches, and general kind of feeling blasé. So take it as a good sign. It means you are making the transition. There you go, and that's the real key mm -hmm. right there. That's what you have to know up front, because if you don't know this up front, you're going to be failing in this. It means you are being successful, and you are starving your body of the sugar it's been craving. And these initial side effects are usually mild, and they're short-lived, so stay the course. Yeah, and that's uh, short and mild. That's the way it was with me because yeah. uh, I thought my diet was decent, but I still ate a lot of carbs. But I do think that it can be very severe for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and there is the problem. So we have to go dive into that And as you more. convert those fat stores to energy, the results you see will be in the mirror, and it'll be worth it. All right. We'll be right back. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. So we're trying to help you with success in becoming more fat adapted. And as we said, as you go through the keto diet, you might have the keto flu, nothing mm -hmm. to worry about. You'll get over it. And you may have some cravings for carbohydrates. And there's a biological reason for this. The microbiome the colony of beings that really are more you than you yourself, uh, they, these 
microbiome uh, species have grown accustomed to feeding on carbohydrates, and you probably have an imbalance of species that demand these foods. It's the little critters inside you. That's right. It's true. The bugs in your gut can actually influence your brain, which we know the gut-brain connection. Mm -hmm. But that will pass. Also, yeah, well, you'll be changing the uh, types of microbiome that you have in there. And to help you with those, the couple of recommendations is alternate plain water with what they call soul water, and that's merely adding a little bit of, uh, of the Himalayan salt. salt. That the electrolyte loss and the increased urinary frequency is also going to be a, a symptom that you'll see. Yeah. And by getting our balance of our electrolytes, we'll feel better. Exactly. The other thing is sip on bone broth. And this is a biggie, boy. Oh, uh, this is something that's really missing. And loaded really with missing. protein. Yeah. And the proteins that we don't get. And the glycogen and all the mm -hmm. stuff for your eyes and your hair and your nails and your skin. I'm a big bone breath. Yeah, fan. and if you're having problems, other, uh, increase your consumption of low-carb vegetables, the ones that have a lot of uh, fiber in it, maybe even some mushrooms, avocado that has some decent fat in it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use kale and broccoli and all those things, too, if you wish. And here's some bad news. You sometimes get some funky breath yes. when you first make this change. Yep. It's kind of an unusual smelling breath. And this is a few weeks into the keto diet. You may notice that it's actually you're producing uh, a, a higher level of acetone in your body. And acetone is a ketone, hear the word, that's produced in your body as it enters ketosis. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a good sign, it's slightly awkward. Well, so it, it means we're it's kicking working. out we're kicking out the old microbiome and that smells. Mm -hmm. So we're getting the new stuff in. And <laughs> that's a good way to say that's it. That's yeah. the way I see it. Yeah. So the other thing is that the short-term fatigue, and this is what and we stops a lot of people. we kind of talked about it, yeah. Yeah, we kind of talked about it, but it's a big reason why most people stop. Because if you're an energetic person uh, and here you are on a new diet and you're all hyped and I'm feeling real good, now all of a sudden you start going downhill. Yeah. Well, the body's and, still struggling that's right. to produce that higher energy uh, from the fats. It's yep. still working on it. But. Yep. So that's our show for today. I hope it helped you some. Of course, we're going to throw this into the uh, Health Signals newsletter and you'll be reading about it. So thanks a lot for sticking around. And see have you next a great time. day. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.